Here's an explanation of the binomial distribution and how to use the graph and calculator, the TI-83 or 83 plus or 84 to do um, the calculations. Uh, let's start with the binomial distribution. Um, suppose that 20% of cars speed or go over the speed limit. If a police officer watches eight cars pass by, we could ask the following questions. Uh, what's the probability that there would be three speeders among the eight? I could ask you to find the probability that there would be three or less speeders. And to accomplish this, you can get the answer by working with a formula that's provided to you on the exam. It's the Bernoulli formula uh, or the formula for binomial settings. It involves combinations and probabilities raised to exponents. Uh, a much faster way, since we're talking about speeding, is to um, use the graph and calculator to unlock the answer. And one way to do that is to type into the calculator under the distribution menu, which is found under second and then the VARS button. Um, go down to binomial PDF, which the P stands for probability distribution function, the PDF. Um, it's waiting for three numbers. If you give it eight, which is the total number of trials, 0.2, which is the probability of success, and three, because we're interested in exactly three speeders, um, it would give you the following answer, about 15%. To determine three or less, you can also use the graph and calculator to help you there. To determine three or less, we can use the binomial cumulative distribution command. And that C would represent now not only three, but three, two, one, or zero successes. So typing in the command with CDF, just like a normal CDF command, it accumulates all the probabilities in this case from three and lower, which is what we want. And you get 94%. Now to figure out some other set situations, such as the probability of three or more speeders among the eight, you can again use the commands on the calculator. If you want three or more, the CDF command figures out that many and less. Um, there's not a command that does so many and more. What you'd have to do is use um, the idea of complements. We want three or more. We don't want two speeders, one speeder, or zero speeders. So we can have that idea. Since we don't want two or less, we can subtract away from 100% or 1 to determine the probability of 3 or more. And then again, we're still using the binomial CDF command, which gives us about 20%. And there's one, le one more question that could be asked regarding these in terms of figuring out the probabilities. What about the probability that you'd get between two to five speeders, inclusive, so including two and five? To determine that, figure out what you want. We want between two to five. So if we figure out the probability of five or fewer, and then take away one or fewer, we'll be left with two speeders, three, four, or five. Uh, you can calculate these probabilities individually and then add them up. Or by using the CDF command, you can kind of speed up the process with just um, typing in just one line in the calculator. So the probability of there being five or fewer, one or fewer, and the difference between that will be five, four, three, and two which comes out to be about 50%. One other thing you can do 
with these distributions is actually get a picture of them. And to do that, you can come up with a histogram that shows the distribution function from beginning to end. And this is what I have here for you. Um, sometimes these binomial distributions are nicknamed with a capital B, just like we would um, nickname a normal curve with an N. And the first number would be N, the number of trials, which is known, and point 0.2, which would be the probability of success. And you can list all the probabilities separately. And you can see that this graph is skewed to the right. The expected value and the formula for the expected value is given to you on the AP exam. It's n times p. So the average number of speeders you could expect in 8 would be 1.6. So it's just n times p. And then finally, another formula that you're asked to use is the formula for standard deviation that's given to you on the exam. It's the square root of the expected mean times the probability of failure. So for this particular case, it would be 1.6 times 0 0.8. 1.28 for the variance. So it would be 1.28 speeders squared, which doesn't seem to have much meaning. That's why we would square root the variance to get the standard deviation. Instead of calling it speeders squared, it would be called just the number of speeders, so about 1.13. So how do you use standard deviation to uh, express what's happening here? Well, a nice way to express it is um, start with your mean and then subtract the standard deviation and add the standard deviation. So you'd say that a typical police officer might expect somewhere between 0.6 to 2.6 uh, speeders. 2.7 speeders. Um, 